I'm telling you, this is like a story time. Everything that could have gone wrong the day before my step exam did go wrong. Like everything. I fully intended to vlog my step one study process, but once it got going, I just didn't. I think I had many, many reasons for not vlogging. One being that it just ended up being more stressful and time consuming and energy consuming than I imagined it would be. I think my priorities kind of changed over the course of my study period where I initially thought, you know, I'd work out and then I would do a lot of studying and then I'd dedicate some time in the evenings to make videos, but then, like I said, it just was so energetically taxing, the act of studying for step one, even with it being pass fail, that I ended up wanting to use that evening time for either like a little bit of additional studying or hanging with friends and watching a movie or just straight up like disconnecting and trying to you know manage my own stress and anxiety about this exam. So I didn't end up vlogging the process, but I wanted to sit down with you guys today because I'm telling you, this is like a story time. Everything that could have gone wrong the day before my step exam did go wrong. Like everything, everything. So I wanna talk about it. As you can probably see if you are a regular here in these parts, I am not in New York City very cabin vibes. I decided in November or early December that I was actually going to study for step one out here in Colorado. If I have an opportunity to go to Colorado and study and hang out with friends, why not do that? Coming out here just felt like it would give me an opportunity to be a little bit more balanced during my dedicated periods and also feel like a little bit of a vacation away from the city, away from the hospital, even away from like fellow classmates who many of whom were like my best friends, but you know, it's kind of nice to be completely removed from all of that and be in your own space. And I do not regret my decision. I honestly think that it has been the greatest thing during Dedicated to come out here and just have the fresh air and the trees and the snow and beautiful views and meals with friends. It's been everything I could want or need. When I originally decided I would take step one out here, I told myself that I would gauge how step one studying went and decide if I wanted to stay here for step two. Now that I'm through step one studying, I've decided that I do want to stay here for step two, although I'm going to be making a lot of changes and really buckling down for step two. Colorado has been beautiful. I'm actually trying to learn to snowboard, which is an absolute disaster, like a total disaster. There's no reason me I should be on a snowboard, but it's so much fun and it's been something really nice to do, especially during this little break that I've had between step one and going into my step two dedicated. Some of you are probably like, wait, what's going on? Like you're a third year medical student, you finished your clinical rotations, now you're taking step one, now you're going straight into step two. I've talked about this in other videos. My medical school's curriculum is set up such that we do one and a half years in the classroom and then go straight into one year on the wards, after which we take step one. In the past, step one was scored. And so people dedicated, you know, eight weeks or six and a half weeks of study time to step one. Now that it's gone past fail, we've dedicated shorter amount of time to step one and rules surrounding step two and when to take step two have changed. I think in the past, people put a lot of weight on step one. They would take step one if they did well. They'd worry about step two kind of after getting through the resident application cycle or maybe like later. And if people didn't do well on step one, they would use step two as an opportunity to like redeem themselves in some way and show that like, yeah, I can, I know my medicine, you know? And so people would take step two, move up their step two test date to get it in before residency applications were due. Now that my class will be one of the first classes to take step one pass fail, and we're also in this interesting position where because of the way our curriculum set up, we're taking it pass fail, but some of our co-applicants in the same residency application cycle will have a score. My school has kind of changed its guidance in terms of when you should take step two, and they are having us all take step two before July or before this residency application cycle. So we'll all have a step one pass fail or some people who chose to take it early and got a score and a step two score. That being said, some people are choosing to take step two much, much later, like in April or May or you know after completing an elective or two. And some people are going straight from step one into step two dedicated and I happen to be one of the latter. So I finished step one, I took that on February 4th, I've taken about a week off of studying and I'm about to go into my step two dedicated and get ready to study for step two. Am I anxious, am I nervous? Yes, absolutely. I've also kind of just decided what specialty I wanna apply into and so this step two score is gonna be really important. I just wanna make sure that I am as competitive as possible to make sure that I am set up to succeed during this application cycle. But enough about step two since I'm not even there yet, I wanna talk about step 
step one. I took step one on February 4th and I actually ended up pushing my test tape back. I was supposed to take it on January 31st. I was prepped and ready to take it. And then I took an MBME, probably a little bit too close to my test date. And it went so terribly, so, 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 so terribly that I panicked and I did not want to take step one. I talked to my academic advisors. They told me, you know, you don't have to push back your date. I don't think you would fail. But I think seeing how terrible I did on that last MBME really did not put me in the right mindset. And I really wanted to feel like I gave it my all and I would only have to take step one once. So that was kind of like the first thing, maybe the first bad sign. I don't know if step one is an exam you feel like 100% ready for ever because it's one of those things where you're never gonna know every single fact and that's still a feeling that I'm not super comfortable with. I think in undergrad courses, I've always been that person that like tries to learn everything. I don't like to leave 10% of the test or 15% or 20% or 30% of the material unknown and untouched and, and risk that on an exam. But with step one and over the course of my studying, I quickly realized or maybe realized a little bit too late that I wasn't going to learn every single thing. I don't know it freaked me out. The day before my exam, I actually drove to Boulder to spend the night in a hotel before my test day because I didn't want to be like driving up the morning of. That would be crazy. I get to my hotel room and I order some food on the phone. I take a shower. And by the time I get out of the shower, my phone is no longer working. I think I had it in my hand and it like turned to green screen and then shut off. As you can imagine, this completely stressed me out because like many of us, I use my phone as an alarm. I was like, oh my God, how am I gonna get up on test day? And like now I don't have a phone, I can't contact anyone. Like this is just a disaster. Even like driving back tomorrow will be a pain. I ended up having to go to the lobby and ask for a wake up call in the morning. My food finally arrives. Thankfully I didn't need my phone to get it because they actually brought it up to my room. I eat a little bit of food. I was really nervous about eating before an exam because I just convinced myself that I would get food poisoning, like no matter what I did. I don't want to eat too much. I don't want to feel full. I don't want to get a stomach ache. Brush my teeth, got ready for bed. I popped a melatonin at eight o'clock. I was out like a light by 8.30, but not for long because at 11 a.m. I woke up sweating, nauseous. I don't know if I manifested my fear or what, but I fully think I had food poisoning the night of my exam. Either that or serious anxiety, but I honestly didn't even feel anxious. I felt kind of relieved, like, oh, I fell asleep. It's great, but I don't know. I woke up at 11 o'clock. This is the night before my exam, sweating, nauseous. You know when you're like sick and you have the flu and you're like, I just need to throw up and I'll feel better. I, I just couldn't, like I nothing came up, but I was sweating and I was so nauseous and my stomach hurt. So I kept getting up to go to the bathroom to see if I would just like puke, but I didn't puke. So then I'd get back in bed. It was just like so miserable because Every hour on the hour, I was like looking at the clock, checking the time. But 11, midnight, 1.30. And before I knew it, it was 4 a.m. and I still hadn't fallen back asleep. So I was basically awake for five hours in the middle of the night. Around 4.05, 4.10, I think I dozed off for another hour. All in all, I think I got three and a half, four hours of sleep and I didn't feel great. And I still had this like stomach ache. Even when I went down for breakfast at 6 a.m. in my hotel lobby, I asked for a plain bagel. I ate about half the bagel, had a little bit of coffee. Couldn't even drink all of the coffee because my stomach was hurting so bad. It was just truly a nightmare. I didn't feel super tired, so that was good. But I knew, dang, your brain is not operating at 100% when you've only gotten so little sleep. And I'd been so good during my step one study, like routine about going to sleep and waking up and always getting at least eight, eight and a half hours of sleep and like feeling good. Going into the exam, I was definitely a little bit nervous about not having slept enough because it's a long exam. It's seven one hour sections, 280 questions. I didn't feel like it was appropriate to kind of like no show my exam that morning. It just felt like, like, what would be the point of that? I drove all this way. Let me just take this exam. And I did. I went into the test center and at my Prometric testing center, there were a couple of people taking different exams, but I think there was one other person taking step one. I'm not sure. I didn't talk to them about it, but I just noticed that she was there for about as long as I was while other people kind of came and went. Like some people came in at 8 a.m. for their exams, but they were gone by afternoon. Some people were coming in at noon for their exams, but it was super quiet. So I have no complaints about the testing center itself. I just personally wish I'd slept more. And then I started taking step one. The first section, I felt like pretty good like as good as I could feel about a step one you know 40 question set I was like you know like that wasn't that bad and then question set two came and I felt like uh, that wasn't like bad, but it wasn't great. And then the section three came and I feel like I kind of recovered, like, okay, that was okay. Then the last four sections literally took me out. Like, I don't know what happened. I still can't like figure out what went wrong, but I think the combination of my brain processing power being 
at an all time low given how little I slept. And maybe there's the questions being super challenging or maybe I was just like tired and I hadn't eaten. I have no idea. But the last four sections were so hard and I left the exam 100% certain I had failed. I mean, right now I don't know if I did pass. So that's why I'm not giving out study advice in this video and I really wanna wait for my score and knowing that I for sure passed before giving out more details on my study schedule. I'm like stuck somewhere between, you know, trying to be positive and and feeling like I 100% failed and should kind of accept that and not get my hopes up. So I don't really know what the good approach is for my mental health at this point. Oh God, I just stepped on this. Part of me wants to be positive, but the other part of me doesn't want to be like, yeah, I passed, yes, I passed, and then open my results and see I failed. And I know most people pass, but things did not go my way that test day. Everything that could have gone wrong did go wrong. From having to push it back because of a bad last final practice exam, to not getting enough sleep and being literally ill, I wasn't in my ideal test taking condition. That's the other thing about step one being pass fail. I thought I would be completely stress free and in some ways I was, but in other ways I was like, I'm still stressed out. I can't imagine how people took this for a score because I am still so stressed out. So that's really it. I wanted to include question and answer in this video because it just feels like there are probably a million specific questions that you guys have about taking step one, but I will be back on Instagram soon. I'm getting a new phone ASAP. And if you are interested in seeing the day-to-day -day of step two studying, I would highly recommend that you follow me on there as well as on TikTok because that is where I consistently post daily content. And I'm going to try vlogging for step two. That's that. If you haven't any questions, let me know. Leave them in the comments down below. Send your good vibes my way because I am in desperate need. My step one day was just a total nightmare. I feel like I'm rambling now. I've been chatting to the camera for over 20 minutes and um, I need to chop this up and put it up for you guys so you guys can see it. Survive step one for now. I'm waiting, anxiously awaiting my step one score. I will talk to you guys real soon in a vlog or in a step one study advice video. In one of those things. Thanks for being here.